I can't make it without you, God, if I don't have your power. Let us pray. Kind and merciful God, we come now in the hour of your preached word. Hide your man servant again, O oh God, behind the sacred desk. Stand up in me today, O oh God, and give me the strength to boldly to go before your people with your divine word. God, when I'm weak, I know that you are strong within me. So, God, I'm weak today. So, Lord, I know you're strong. Keep me now, God, as only you can. And we know that your word won't return for. For this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We say good morning to our Facebook and YouTube family. Always good to have you in our worship experience this morning. As we prepare for the word, our scripture is coming from the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 28, and excuse me, it's coming from verses 24 through 28, from 24 through 28, Genesis. Chapter 32, verses 24 through 28. Amen. And we are using the NIV version for our translation this morning. We ask that if you can and will, that you will stand to give God word of reverence. For he bless you to walk in here on this morning. Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 24 through 28. Amen. The word of God says, so Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was rich as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, yeah. but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Yeah. Our key verse this morning is verse 28. Yeah. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Just for a few minutes, if God would allow, I'd like to speak from this thought. You are stronger than you think. You're stronger than you think. One of the things that we learned early on in our Christian journey is that we will all face struggles. Yeah. Now, if you are like me, I sometimes ask God, why is it necessary for struggles? But if so uncomfortable, and I would rather not have to go through them, and struggles drains me. All right. To be honest, we all wish that God would forgo the struggles and just, just bless us, God. And, Give us what we ask you to give us. Come on now. But God says that no, you shall have trials and tribulations. But he doesn't stop there. He said, but be of good courage. What is a struggle? A struggle is that which makes you reach deep within to push beyond where you think you have the capability of not reaching. Because you don't believe within yourself that you have the strength. Since the fall of Adam, 
When a woman gives birth, there is a struggle for her at the time of delivery. She must go into a push mode, a struggle to get the baby to move from one position through the birth channel to be delivered. And so she struggles to make it happen. Matter of fact, I, I never had my hand squeezed so hard to when first lady was delivering our first child. Uh, 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 for the doctor gave us some exercises to do and I, I was trying to be the good instructor but, but, but when that pain yeah. hit her right, and she had to push when they told her to push, I wish I wasn't holding her hand. Ah, yeah. uh, struggle. But what, what is so beautiful about a struggle is that when you think of the relationship of a mother birthing a child. The beauty that takes place after the struggle, there it is, is worth all of the struggle that we went through. Now I'm saying we, I, I didn't go through nothing. First lady went through all of that. But the beauty of that little child coming out crying and healthy and have all of the limbs and all of the faculty that God has given them is worth the struggle. Have I got it? And God wants you to know you're stronger than you think because there are some struggles, but if you remain faithful yeah. and keep pushing, oh, yeah. the outcome Ooh, would be right. worth all yeah. of the struggles that you had to deal with. You're stronger than you think. Every day, all of us recognize the struggle that we are in, the process of overcoming Many may feel today that their struggles are getting the best of them, and that's why this message is so important for you. For God wants you to know, hear me now, that you are stronger than you think. A great hymn we would sing down south, it would say, encourage my soul and let us journey on, for the night is dark. And I'm so far from home. But thanks be to God, the morning lights appear. The storm is passing over. The storm is about to pass over. The storm is passing over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. One of the best things a parent can do for a child who lacks confidence is to reassure them that they are stronger than they think. Oh, yeah. A healthy self-esteem will go a long way in helping that child to develop the inner strength to push beyond their limits. They need to believe that what is in them just need to be cultivated to the potential that God has already predestined. And so it is, too, with us adults. God also wants to reassure the Christian, the believer this morning, that his grace is sufficient as he shared with the Apostle Paul. And that for when we are weak, God says that within him we are strong. Oh, beloved, you're stronger than you think. For today, I want to bring some hope to someone who feels hopeless. And today, I want to bring a bright smile to someone who's experienced nothing but dreary days. Today, I want to bring a feeling to someone that even though you feel like your strength is almost gone, hang on in there. You're stronger than you think. And so, beloved, I want to encourage you, and I, I just wish you to reach over to that neighbor sitting next to that neighbor. Tell that neighbor, tell that neighbor, you're stronger than you think. In the background of this text, we know the story here. In the text, we find a familiar story, a story of two brothers, Jacob and Esau, their father Isaac and their mother Rebecca. You, you know the story. Esau and Jacob were twins, and in the Bible says that these babies uh, was in the mother's womb, but both babies wanted to be first. And they struggled to be delivered first. Early in this family, this family was dysfunctional. 
Uh, for Isaac loved the older son Esau and the firstborn, and Rebekah loved Jacob, the secondborn. But in this dysfunctional family, God was going to reverse the order. He, he was going to make Jacob, the secondborn, really get the full blessing. But you know how we are. We, we, if we'd have just let God deal with it, it would have been fine. But, but uh, Rebecca got involved and thought that she would trick Isaac. And, and so Esau, who uh, should have gotten it, but was more concerned about food than a blessing, and he gave it away, and his brother took advantage of him. And now... Jacob, who has the blessing, can't use the blessing. Uh -huh. He's got to run because his brother Esau is going to kill him. And so Rebecca, the mother, sends him off to the uncle Laban and says, you can find safety there. And so Jacob leaves. He leaves Canaan and he goes now to live with his uncle Laban. And because of his tricks, ah, Jacob now has to struggle. Yeah. Oh, I, I know you, you thought you were smart. I know you thought you had the best plan. But your trickery yeah. has right. caused you to now yeah. have to struggle. Right. But Jacob now takes up residence in the land where his uncle Laban lives. And Jacob now sees a beautiful young lady called Rachel and it was the youngest daughter of Laban, and he falls in love with her. And he says, I want to take her hand in marriage. Well, you know in those days, nothing don't be given away free. It's, it's amazing today how people think good stuff comes free, but nothing in this world comes free. It's amazing how people want to see more things offered up in food and ministry, but they don't recognize that nothing comes free. And so he tells Jacob, if you want my baby, you're going to have to work seven years. And so he was happy to do that. He worked seven years. But in the night of consummating the marriage, he found out who he thought he was sleeping with. But it wasn't who he thought he was sleeping with. It was Leah. And now he finds out that the wife that he thought he was getting wasn't the wife. He got it all. You see, you got to be very careful when you start playing with tricks. Because yeah. you will get tricks. Yeah. And so now he struggles. Yeah. He says, but I still want Rachel. In those days, you could have more than one wife. And so the uncle says, I see a great proposition right here. You work seven more years and I'll, I'll give you Rachel, who you first should have had. And so he works another seven years. Now he's up to 14. All because of trickery. He struggled now from one year to 14 years. Well, when that 14 years came, his uncle says, well, I, I, I'm going to give you Rachel, but you can't leave with Rachel. For what I want you to do now, because God, even in your struggle, don't miss this, God has had his hands on you. Even in your trickery mess, God has had his hands on you. And because you come to my house, my house that has been blessed. Yeah. And so what I want you to do is work another six more years. Yeah. Now one now becomes 20. Yeah. But don't miss this. God was still blessing even yeah. in his trickery mess. I'm not telling you to get in mess and tell God to bless you, but I want you to know that even in spite of your issue, even and in spite of how you have done something, God is still blessing you. And so it is now. He works 20 years, and yet he finds his uncle wasn't satisfied, and he continued to try to trick him more not going to go through all of the story, but then the Lord spoke up and said, it's time to get out of yeah. Laban's house. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. The Lord says, it's time for you to move. Yeah. You've been depending on some folk. You've been living with some folk. You've been counting on some folk to always pull you through. Yeah. God is saying, it's time for you to move. Yeah. And so the only place God says that you can continue to be blessed is you got to go back. God, I got to go back. Yeah, you got to go back to Canaan. 
God, you know I can't go back there because I messed up the hip. God said, you got to clean up uh, what you messed up if you're going to continue to be blessed by me. Uh, God is telling somebody, I know you thought you were going to move on and move on. Uh, but God says, if you're going to be blessed by me, if you're going to keep receiving my honor, you got to go back and face what you messed up. Ah, so God, God saying that I'm going to bless you. But I love this about Jacob. Jacob decided that I love God so much that I'm going back. I wish somebody would remember that. You love God so much that you're going to go back and say, I'm sorry. You love God so much. That you're going to go back and say, I did you wrong 10 years ago, and I'm going to straighten it out. I wish you would say, I love God so much. I'm not going to let this friction kill you continue between us. And I'm going to fix it. So Jacob now decides that, that he must go back to face his brother Esau. But here lies the problem. A return to the promise will put him in danger of his brother. For he had received word uh, through his servants, beloved, that Esau, his brother, was coming to find him and he was coming to kill him. Can you imagine God tells you to go back and face something that might kill you? But here's what you got to understand. If God tells you to go back to something that you couldn't handle in the first place, you can rest assured that God is going to make a way for you to handle it. And the problem we get is we think that how we going to fix it rather than how God said let him fix it. Somebody told me Jesus will fix it after a while. Look at, look at Jacob. Jacob saying, well, what can I do? Well, I, I, I got all these possessions. Children, livestock, servants. I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to send them ahead of me. And when uh, uh, you get to Jacob, uh, when you get to Esau's clan, he told all of his servants and his wives to bow and say, Lord, in other words, saying that you are our master. Yeah. It's interesting how we think we can fix it when God told us, let him fix it. Yeah. Uh, so he, he prepares now to send everybody but himself. Right, right, right. Uh, the text says, so Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip and so that his hip was rent as he wrestled with him. Uh -huh. Jacob now is all alone. Yeah. It's interesting to see a man who has so much yeah. is all alone. Yeah. Yeah. Life can be very difficult when you're alone. Yeah. Uh, you had all of this, but just in a matter of days, God can reduce you to being all alone. Yeah. You've got to be careful how you live. It was so wonderful to yeah. see all that family yesterday. That lets me know that Mother, Mother Pearl lived the life because she was never alone. Yeah, right. But now, but now Jacob, as he ponders, uh, what if Esau kills all of them and then I'm next? Well. And so, as he laid down that night, he was all alone. So here we are in the three main points of the text that I want you to get to understand that you're stronger than you think. Right. Jacob feeling like now he has no strength to go up against Esau. He, he, he was 
a weak against Esau in the first place because he was the strong and burly one. Now he hears that Esau has an army greater than he could even imagine. He hears that Esau had not forgotten about the trick that he played and now he's alone. But I want you to let you know he's not alone. I want to encourage somebody right now for when you think you are alone, if you're a child of God, you really help me somebody not alone. Well, let's go and see what, 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 what the text tells us that we ought to look at and how can we recognize, Pastor Benjamin, that we're stronger than we think. Well, here's my first point. The first point that you should understand that you're stronger than you think because this is going to help you. Here it is. Solitude can be a place of strength. Being alone can be a place of strength. I'm talking to the believers now. Solitude can be a place of strength. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Solitude brings strength. How does it bring strength? Your focus becomes more direct. I don't have all them distractions. I need an answer. So my focus becomes Laser. Solitude brings strength. How? You don't have time for the nonsense of the day. Oh, when you're going through something and you know you got to hear from God and get an answer, you ain't gonna answer the phone for some person you know ain't about nothing but mess. Uh, you ain't gonna answer the door for somebody who's coming over and ain't coming over with nothing but just the gossip. I, you ain't gonna go to a function where you know that all they do is argue. You you, you ain't gonna let nonsense yeah. of today cloud your mind. Yeah. Ah, solitude brings strength. You will be greater determined to let trivial stuff go. It's amazing how folk who need to be focused let trivial stuff get in the way. Uh -huh. I lost the button on my shirt. Well, I don't guess I'm going to church today. Trivial! I remember Sister Doreen was telling us she broke her heel, but she didn't care. She said, I'm that church. I don't care. Y'all see me limp with one shoe and one shoe off. It don't matter! I made it! Many folk let trivial stuff keep them from being focused about God. Solitude brings strength. How? You won't have time for those who just criticize and bring no solutions. Huh? For when I need to hear from God, I don't have time for the criticism or the criticizing. Because they ain't helping you nowhere. It's, a, it's amazing. You ever see somebody that's standing back and say, if I were you, I wouldn't have done it like that. Well, you ain't doing nothing. Get your hands off your hip and help us. Matter of fact, if you don't like how it's being done, why don't you jump in and help us? And it'll change somehow. And eat. Get so sick of folk who always criticize and but don't never have their hand in helping in anything. For in these times, your prayers become sincere and passionate. When David was in solitude, he prayed with passion and his prayer was sincere. When Daniel was in the lion den, he prayed with sincerity and with passion. When the Hebrew boys, I can tell you getting ready to be put into the fiery furnace, they didn't have time to pray these weak prayers, but they prayed with passion. When Hezekiah heard that his life was going to be ended, he turned his face to the wall and said, Lord, don't you know I've been faithful? I've done what you've asked me to do. Is there anybody this morning uh, 
when you have been in a solitude situation, that you look like things were not going to turn around. Did you pray with a weak prayer? Or did you holler and say, Jesus, I love calling your name. Jesus, help me, Master, help me. I can't make it if you don't help me. Oh, I know I've been there late in the midnight hour when First Lady couldn't do nothing for me. Yes, she was there. But only Jesus could touch the pain uh, that was racking my body. And I said, Lord, you know me. Help me. Help me, God. Oh, I'm telling you, there's nothing like a solitude situation to bring about sincerity. And so, beloved, I want you to know you're stronger than you think, even if you're alone. But you're not alone. Because you can focus better on Jesus. Well, Jacob, Jacob, here's what I want you to see, Jacob. The second thing, solitude can be a place of strength. The second thing that can show you you're stronger than you think is this. Desperation situation or desperate situations releases our desire to prevail. Uh -huh. Desperate situations releases our desire that I'm going to make it. Yeah. I've been in some desperate situations uh, and what it created in me was a desire that I'm not going out like this. Yeah. When God desires to better your character, He'll use a desperate situation to shape your foundation. We often think that there is no change needed in our lives, but we just call it on God. And God, you ought to do what I've called you to do. God, I, I even quoted your word back to you because you told me to pray your word. God said, yeah, I'm fine with that. But I, I know my word and my word is fine. What, what isn't fine is you who's standing before me. And so in order for my word to work, there's got to be some work going on in you. In order for the word and your spirit to marry and be able to generate what I have available. And so he says, there's some change, Jacob, that needs to take place. The reason why, not always, the reason why some of you might be experiencing so much hell right now. It's because God is desiring a character shift. God is desiring a character shift. What's a character shift? A shift out of you thinking that it's all you and nobody else. A shift of being selfish instead of selfless. A shift of thinking that everybody must come my way instead of you meeting people halfway. A shift of thinking that I'm that and I'm back of chip. A shift. God is saying that he is trying to usher some stuff out of you and he's trying to put some things that you don't see in you. And so he tells Jacob, I'm going to put you in a desperate situation because you can't go back to Canaan, Jacob. You can't face Esau as Jacob. <laughs> But the only way that you're going to face him is your name got to change. Uh, your characters have to shift. Your mindset has to change. And you got to be Israel. Uh, no longer Jacob. Uh, but you got to be Israel. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He was in a desperate situation. When, when you become desperate, you don't care who sees you crying at the altar. When you become desperate, you don't care about what they say about the clothes you wear in the church. When you become desperate, you don't need the praise team to push you to say hallelujah to Jesus. When you become desperate, you don't care if you have a college degree. You will work at McDonald's or any place as long as it's honest work. When you become desperate, you 
You don't care what other people think about you. All you care is what God knows about you. Look at the strength Jacob displayed for he held on to the man to dead break. <laughs> is there anybody ever been desperate for you said, God, I'm I'm going to keep doing this to daybreak. God, God I'm going to stay on my knees until daybreak. God, God I'm going to worship you until you change my situation. God, I'm going to holler until you fix it. God, I'm desperate. And I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing until I get an answer from you. God is saying to someone this morning, you're about to make a great change. Yes. I know, I know, I know you don't like where you are. Yes. I know you don't like your situation. Yes. I know, I know they didn't treat you right. Yes. But keep fighting because what I'm trying to get out of you Woo. and to become into a promise, yes. you're right there. Hold on to me. Keep fighting until I deliver you. You're stronger than you think. Lastly, then, beloved, as we go home, you're stronger than you think. Solitude can be a place of strength. A desperate situation releases our desire to prevail. Well, the last thing that's going to help you all is this. Point three says your strength becomes your transformation or transforming tool when you're holding on to Jesus. Your strength become your transforming tool. In other words, because you're holding on to Jesus, there's going to be a transformation. Until you grab a hold of Jesus, nothing can happen. Until you lock on to the Savior, to the Master, no change can come. Right. How do I know that? It's in the text. He says, Then the man said, Let me go, for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I, I won't let you go until you transform me. I won't let you go until you change what I came to you with won't be what I leave from you with. I, 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 I won't let you go until I know that when I get to Esau, not only will I be spared, but he'll be able to spare all of my children, all of my servants, all of my wives, all of my lives. Lord, I'm, I'm going to hold on to you until some transformation takes place. Is there anybody this morning that I made up in your mind that Oh, Lord, I don't know what everybody else is going to do. But I made up in my mind. I grabbed hold to Jesus. And I'm not going to let it go. But somebody said, my daddy used to sing a song. Come on, Jesus. Uh, take a hold of my hand. Uh, for I don't mind it, Lord. Take a hold to my hand. He said, my daddy said, my mama took a hold of your hand. Uh, and I'm going to take a hold of your hand. Is there anybody this morning? have said to somebody why are you still doing what you're doing? You tell them I'm holding on to Jesus. Why are you still serving like you're serving? I'm still holding on to Jesus. Sister Marjorie, why are you keep nursing like you're nursing? I'm holding on to Jesus. Uh, uh, I'm holding I'm holding I'm holding I'm holding because I believe that when I continue to keep my hand in the master's hand, it ain't going to always be like this. It ain't going to always be like this. Sister Doreen and Sister Deborah, it ain't going to always be like your life is on hold. It ain't going to always be like your struggle. It ain't going to always be like you have to wait before you can go. It ain't going to always be. God, God, God says I've got a plan for you to prosper you and 
not to harm you. Yeah. It ain't gonna always be like it is. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I know the day ain't always nice. Yeah. I know you go through some things that you say, why do I have to, Lord? Yeah. But he's saying you're stronger yeah. than you think. Yeah. What I want you to do is don't listen to somebody else. Yeah. But you hang on in there. Yeah. You hang on in there. Yeah. He said, but there's a prize waiting for you. Yeah. It's not given to the swifts yeah. and not the one who is the strongest. Yeah. But the one who presses yeah. the one who endures, yeah. the one who stick with it. Yeah. Ah, Mother Wither stuck with it for 70 years here in yeah. God is saying that's what he wants somebody to remember. Yeah. Hold on. To God's unchanging hand. You're stronger than you think. God bless you. God bless you. Go on to the churches on Monday.